Speaker's Corner is the area in Hyde Park, considered the oldest free speaking platform in the world, having hosted decades of speeches since the mid 1800s. But its reputation as a safe haven for free speech and opinions of all varieties came under threat this week when a heated discussion erupted into, well, an actual brawl. And that, this required the police to be called. So Speaker's Corner regular Steve Chilcott was present at the time and he joins me now. Steve, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. You've been on the show a few times and, of course, you've been going to Speaker's Corner for an awful long time. You're... Longer than I care to remember. Right, so you, it means a great deal to you. Absolutely, yeah. Um, why don't you tell us what happened last Sunday? So, unfortunately, we had the return of some quite vicious violence last weekend, last Sunday, um, when one of the very regular Christian preachers at the corner was very violently and aggressively attacked. Um, started with a shove, he ended up on the floor, fists were going, kicks were going in. Um, his, his Christian preacher friends were, were attacked by a mob that, that landed upon them. When you say a mob, how many are we talking? Um, I mean, there was a melee going on, frankly. Um, I would say there was 20-plus people. Were the police there? There was no police there at the time that it happened. Um, they were called, they arrived five, ten minutes later. And I have to say, they were not interested. The, the, the aggressors were pointed out to them, they were identified, people were showing them videos of the attack on their phone, so they knew the individuals who were still standing there as, as bright as anything in the park. The police did not even approach them. They okay. didn't take their names, they didn't take their identity, they didn't speak to them. So the whole point of Speaker's Corner is anyone could stand up and say anything they like, irrespective yep. of how controversial it is. Yep. What was this Christian preacher saying that caused so much upset? They were arguing about um, whether Jesus is God. <laughs> You know, okay. a, 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 so a theological a Typical speech. theological discussion that goes in on week in, week out at Speaker's Corner. Nothing contentious, no... You know, <laughs> we, we know what more contentious things could have been said. There was nothing remotely contentious. So, so who were these people attacking? Was it a group of militant atheists or something? <laughs> Or Buddhists, I think yeah, they might have been Buddhists. Oh, no, they, yeah. no, they weren't. They, they, were, they were Islamists. The, the one guy, the main protagonist of this attack, who I've since discovered, is a Lebanese-born Islamist Sunni preacher who has said some pretty vile things. He said things like 9-11 was an insider plot. He said Jews deserved the Holocaust. It was God's retribution to them. He said George Bush, and I'm no great fan of George Bush, but he says George Bush is a devil-worshipping Illuminati um, that deserved or created so everything. He's, he's a crazy so man. He's, he's an absolute crazy yeah. nutter. We'd not seen him at Speaker's Corner before, but clearly he came with a large crowd of people who ended up inflicting physical violence on people. W would you say that this man was inciting the others to inflict this violence? Some of them there, I think, were probably his bodyguards, his security. Right. They, 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 they were big butch guys that were standing with him throughout his, his, his time at the corner, and they were very active in the violence. Yeah, but the, the thing is, with Speaker's Corner, like, you would even justify a man like that, a sort of crazed uh, Islamist well, preacher standing up and saying what I, he I, wants. Yeah, exactly. However um, unwholesome or un, you know, unpleasant it might be, of course, I, I would be the first person to say they have their right to come to Speaker's Corner. Anyone has their right to come to Speaker's Corner, deny the Holocaust, come out with whatever crazy nonsense they want. The tipping point is the violence. The tipping point yes. is the fists and the, and the feet. So, so surely, I mean, I would have thought that the police, and from my limited understanding of what goes on, mm -hmm. the police are meant to be there every week, aren't they? Well, as precisely, kind of... and they are. So I, I was saying to you a moment ago, so Posey Parker, Kelly J. Keane, was there today, had a completely peaceful gathering of the Let Women Speak. No trouble, a very, very large police presence. So so the police pick and choose what they, when they decide to enforce calm and... and, and, and well, it's interesting because a, num a couple of months ago when um, the Let Women Speak group were in Hyde Park, mm -hmm. the police were nowhere to be seen. In fact, Graham Linehan filmed them walking away well, when, when, the, when the women were kettled in mm -hmm. uh, by aggressive men in masks. Well, precisely, but every, week, every month, so mainly they go there at the last Sunday of every month to Speaker's Corner, there's been a huge police presence and it's been very, very well policed. So is that been because there was a backlash to the, the, the police I think negligence? So. I, 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 well, that's the precise word for it. It was negligent last Sunday. It was negligent that time when Graham um, videoed the police officers walking away. Yes. Um, and I think there was a very, very large backlash that I understand went to the Home Office, went, went to the Home Secretary level. See, what I don't understand about this is when it comes to the religious question, when it comes to radical Islamism, mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen a Christian preacher stabbed 
uh, in Hyde Park, and I believe she was arrested. Well, precisely. Hatun Tash, who has been knocked unconscious on one occasion, who has been stabbed in the neck on a second occasion, was herself arrested by the police. Um, she subsequently took them to court and won £10,000 compensa £10, compensation for wrongful arrest. So, that, again, they are very quick to jump in and arrest certain per per well, perpetrators. Just to raise the spectre of Rotherham, uh, we know uh, that we had these, these rapes and sexual abuses going on because the police did not want to arrest a certain mm -hmm. people from a certain community because they would be accused of being racist. Mm -hmm. Is the same thing happening here? As in, radical Islamist preachers can, can incite as much violence the, as they want because they don't want to be accused of racism. The, in, in my view, the Metropolitan Police Force are one of the worst culprits for the inconsistent application of the law. Right. We've seen it with Just Stop Oil. We saw it during lockdown where they treated different protest movements very, very differently. So I, I remember one Sunday um, during the latter times of lockdown, um, you know, they, they had vans, they, they clamped down on anyone stopping momentarily and speaking at Speaker's Corner. Yet at the very same moment across the road in Marble Arch, there, there, there was a sheer Muslim gathering and celebration. Right. So at the very same point in time where they're clamping down on lockdown there, they're not clamping down but, on another area. But is there a problem here when you have certain speakers and uh, people who hold certain ideological beliefs where free speech itself is against their values? And, and, the, and, the, and this is the issue that at Speaker's Corner, which we you know, all know and respect as the, the home of free speech in, in this country is so inconsistently policed. Whereas, you know, Christian preachers are arrested when they are the victims. Yes. Yet these thugs, violent thugs, I mean, the old guy, the guy that I was referring to, the Lebanese preacher, he had a crutch with him, which he was repeatedly bringing down on people's heads. So but that's know, assault. Well, 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 precisely. I mean... It wasn't just a, a, a thug. A th push or whatever, it was vicious, violent attacks. And there's that guy, and the police have shown videos of the crutch coming down on people's heads, and they don't even go and take his name. I mean, th Something's this, not right. Well, it, well, you just need to apply the law irrespective of who is committing the it, crime. Because it, surely this is very patronising to Muslims to suggest that, well, if, 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 if there are groups within that community breaking the law, you should leave them alone. Well, precisely. Because, you know, what we're talking about here at Speaker's Corner is a vile group of extremist Islamists. We're not talking about good, normal British Muslims yes. who, who share the same views as us about the, you know, the benefits of the culture that they live in here um, and, and, quite frankly, are equally appalled by the police's behaviour. Well, because it's particularly bad for them. Because, you know, uh, what happens is this is a gift to certain far-right groups who want well, to paint Muslims right. as inherently violent. Right. It's giving them the ammunition for their hate.